Welcome back to Photoshop Basics on PSD Touch Plus. I'm Martin Perhiniak and today we are going to talk about using type in Photoshop. First, I would like to show you that with the type tool, which is here on the toolbox, you can create a text box or you can just simply start typing, which is something like free typing. If you just simply click with the type tool, that is free typing. I can start typing like this. And I will always need to add a line break with the return or enter key on the keyboard because there is no end to this typing. There's no frame to it. If I want to accept this typing, I need to click on this button here on the control bar or press command or control enter on the keyboard. If you want to create a text box, you need to click and drag. And then if you start typing, you can see we automatically have a line break according to the edges of the text frame. Of course, we can move this frame or change its boundaries by dragging one of these corner points. And we can always come back to edit the text itself because we always create text layers when we use the type tool. So as you can see, if I now accept this typing, we will have two type layers. We have one which is the free typing and we have the other one which is the text box. Whenever I double click on one of them, these little thumbnails, I will select the type and I can make changes to it. I would like to show you some useful keyboard shortcuts. To change the size of the text, you can use command shift plus the dot or the comma. Dot will increase the size and comma will decrease the size. The other useful keyboard shortcut is how to turn your type into all capitals to create uppercase from the lowercase. It's command or control shift K and it can be reversed with the same keyboard shortcut. If you use the same control keys and you use B, that will be bold. If you use I with the same keyboard shortcuts, that will be italic. And if you use U, that will be underlined. The other useful thing is called leading, which can be also used with a keyboard shortcut. It works only if you have more than two lines. So I will make this text frame a little bit narrower like this. And I select both of the lines. And then if I use Alt or Option up and down arrow keys on the keyboard, I can change the leading. The leading is the distance between the two lines. It is really useful and a very important aspect of typography, just like the tracking and kerning, which is nearly the same keyboard shortcut. It's Alt or Option right and left arrows that will change the distance between the letters. It is called tracking if you change the distance between the characters in the whole paragraph. And it's called kerning if you only adjust particular parts of the text to make it look visually more attractive. I'll show you an example for this. I will use this type and I use an all caps version for it. And I turn it back to normal, so without the italic and without the underline. And I will use another type, which is called Tryon Pro. I will type that here in the top, because this is the area where you can choose fonts. And if you click on this, you have a list of these fonts. But I usually type in the name of the preferred font that I'm looking for. If you start typing, it will quickly jump to it and you just need to press enter to select it. I will make this type larger and as we know, we can do that by the keyboard shortcuts that I just told you, command shift plus the dot. But you can also use the option bar here on the top. Instead of clicking on this point size selector drop down menu, you should click on these two little T's here, the icon and drag to the right or to the left. This is also a really fast way to make the type larger or smaller. 
and I accept the change and then I would like to show you kerning so if you look at this type this is the default distance between the letters but if I want to for example move the S and the D a little bit closer to each other also the T a little bit closer to the, this dot and maybe the M also a little bit closer to the O I just simply need to click between those letters so I will start between S and D and I use ALT left arrows then I go to the dot between the dot and the T I use ALT left again move them a little bit closer and I do the same here on the right ALT left and then I accept my changes so this is called kerning and this was before this is after. Whenever you use all caps and large titles for your designs, you should always care for kerning and look for these differences. For example, I still see a problem here between the U and the S. I just moved that a little bit closer as well and maybe also the C a little bit closer to the dot. So now again, before and after. Of course, in Photoshop, we have two panels to edit text. One is the character panel and the other one is the paragraph panel. On the paragraph panel you can choose where you would like to align your text and the justification only works if you use a text box. So I just show you, you can also achieve these options by using keyboard shortcuts. I select this type and command or control shift L is to position it to left, R is to position it to right and C is to position it into the center and J is justify. If you want to change the color of your type you can select a specific part of the type and then here on the top you can change the color quickly. But you can also change the color of a whole text by selecting that layer so I now selected the text box and then I choose a color for my foreground color. Let's say I will choose this red, a similar red that I used on the top. I selected that color for my foreground color. And now if I press Alt or Option Backspace, I can easily colorize the selected text layer. Command or Control Backspace will use the background color, which is in my case was black. So Alt Backspace, foreground color, Command Backspace or Control Backspace is background color. This also works with other layers, not just the type layer. This is a keyboard shortcut for the Fill options, which you find under Edit Fill. And now I would like to show you a great new feature in Photoshop CS5 for changing our type into a 3D object. I will select the psdtouchplus.com type layer and I go to 3D Repose and I choose text layer. We get a huge dialog box but if you click on the type you can easily move it in 3D space and you can see that we already have a 3D object created from the type. You can easily change the depth here in the extrude options. I will make it a little bit smaller 0.5 and you have lots of options here but I would like to show you one thing that is really important when you create 3D type. Uh, so I just click on OK. And that is under the 3D panel. Because if you look closer, this type is a bit pixelated. That is because the rendering for this 3D object is set to draft view. Now, if you go to the 3D panel, there under the quality, you can find Ray Trace Draft and Ray Trace Final. Ray Trace Final is the best option that will create the most smooth lines for the 3D object. But it takes a lot of time to render an object for Ray Trace Final. So I usually use Ray Trace Draft. And mainly, that's all what you need to know about type in Photoshop. And I suggest to you that you should learn about typography in general if you want to use nice layouts with type on your designs. Our next tutorial will be an essential one so don't miss that one. It's about masking. 
one of the most important things that you need to know about Photoshop. So make sure that you come back next time. Thank you for your attention today. And I hope you found the things that we learned about type useful. Thanks again.